welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. Hi, Sue. Hey, girl. How you doing? I'm good. Did I yell? I feel like I yelled. I didn't hear no. it. Listeners, did I yell? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you sound great. You're very you. energetic. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. Yeah. It's a Wednesday. The sun is out. The skies are blue, but we still have snow on our mountains. Yep. If y'all didn't know. And it's 35. It's been a, it's been a wet winter. <laughs> oh, I know. My gosh. But the teenagers are wearing t-shirts outside in the swig line. And I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, it's still very cold. Very, very cold. But I'm glad that Concerned. the sun is fooling you into thinking you can wear a t-shirt outside. What is it with young people not wearing coats? Suckers. They think they're invincible and they're just going to get sick. I hope their noses just start running while they're talking to their friends <laughs> <laughs> into their mouths. on their iPads. Yeah. But they're ordering at that line, at the line of swig. You oh, guys man. in Utah, yes. those of you that don't know, I think they have them in Arizona as well. And Idaho, maybe there's um, we have a little problem. Yes. Tell them what our problem well, is over, too. Overconsumption of sugar via drinks in this like moment in time. Sometimes uh-huh. it was cupcakes. Yeah. For a while. Then we went to cookies. 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 Yeah. We're still kind of like cookies are still kind of like having their heyday, uh-huh. uh, but they're going from like, anyway, but then swig is a soft drink. We love a soft drink. We love to drink our calories here in the state of Utah. Uh-huh. So you get in line, the drive through line with all your children in the back and you go and you order whatever cocktail of of any, any basic they soda you really like. Like all the syrups and the creams and the, they make a cocktail out of sodas. And it's fantastic. And then you're hooked and you can't drink yourself a plain soda again because no. you miss all of the, all of the ooga that they put in there and mix up and use the pebbled ice and a beautiful cup and straw and. Oh, and it's yeah. styrofoam. So it's like. Cool. It's, it's our cool. version of Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. We finally have a thing. <laughs> I know. What's your drink at the swig? Oh, I have a couple. It depends if I'm in a water, if I'm saying I'm going to be healthy, I get the fighter. It's a water that's flavored with all sorts of delightfulness. And then um, I do like the founder, which is Diet Coke with lime and coconut. Coconut cream. Coconut cream. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, I like, there's so many. Just mm-hmm. it depends on the day. Depends on the mood. Depends on yeah. the diet. Yes. You know? Yeah. If I'm, if I'm being good or not. If you need caffeine or not. Yeah. yeah. But the key is drive through. Mm-hmm. Can I get an amen, everybody? Yes. When you have yeah. kids, and you do not want to get out of the car with all all of your tribe. Man. Mama just needs a I'm, soft drink with lots of caffeine. I wish I had kids in my car. I don't, but I'm so cold. <laughs> I'm so cold that I can't get out of my car either. I want to stay on my heated seat with my heated steering wheel and have somebody hand me my beverage. You know, and you can get a hot cocoa. The raspberry <sighs> dream is delightful. Oh, I've never done it. Try it. I, I'm the one that doesn't drink my calories mm. because I have the diabetes and I... I have an issue with taking a insulin shot for a drink. So I'll do it for food, but I don't want to take a shot if I don't have to. Oh, but Suzanne loves to drink a calorie. Put a me and just like feed me a liquid diet all day. Yeah. I'm like an old woman. I love it. Corey, what's your drink of choice? Uh, fruit water. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to swig, but mm. yeah, it's. Do you like it sparkling or still? No, just still. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I love a good drink. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm going to. Drink water. Yeah. You want it to feel like water. Yeah. And if I can, I'm going to have sugar. I'm just like, I'm going to get a baked good of some kind and, or ice cream. And eat your calories. And chew yeah. It. Same. You want to chew your calories. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. like you can also get yourself a baked good to the swig. Yeah. 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 The sugar yeah. cookie. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Or the social sugar. The social, which is a small, thank a you. A smaller sweet. sugar. Because nobody needs that. Just big. like, if you want to feel like a lady. Face. Yeah. Hold on. What's, that. what's the social? <gasps> oh, thanks for cookie. asking. Yeah. It's a small. Are we sponsored by swig? Is no, that what's happening? No, we're not. Okay. Shauna, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. The so- social sugar is a smaller sugar cookie that's frosted. Okay. And it's just, you just feel like a lady. You hold it between your, your two you fingers can, and you mm-hmm. nibble on it. You can fit it in your hand and like all the other sugar cookies that are like the size of your face that yeah. are that okay. are the um calorie equivalent to a to a meal mm-hmm. it's like a know? big mac or a cookie which one do you want yeah. like yeah truly yeah anyway enough anyway. about that yeah how, how are you, you Corey? good yeah, yeah. what's yeah. new for you we were just talking about Shit's creek before this so yeah. we've been watching that i've been thinking about all day because there's so many one like so many good one-liners in that thing you kind of want the subtitles on when you're watching it too yes. because then you can like pause write it down so you don't forget it <laughs> it's so i remember funny. doing that when i was like watching it for the first time i'm like i would just stop and rewind and like send jess videos i'm like do you remember that part 
So funny. You guys, Corey has the great pleasure of never having seen it. And so he's just now getting into it and we're all reliving it. And like, we wish we could not have seen it yet and see it for the first time. It was so great. It really is so good. We're only like half, we're a little bit half. Yeah. A little bit through um, season one, but about how many nights of entertainment you have ahead of you? I know. Lucky. like when we started loving it, I think it probably took us like two episodes. Once we got in the second episode, we we're like, yeah, we're into this. And so now I'm yeah. like, man, we have a show for like the next few months. It's right? the best. For you. I, but it's a good rewatch. I've watched when it a couple people, times. Yeah, I have too. When yeah. people aren't sure about it, I'm like, just start in season four then because they've really got their legs under them and everything is really stupid funny mm-hmm. and you're laughing your face off. And so, but yeah. if you can start at the beginning and start loving it, that's the biggest treat of all. Honestly, even if you do start on season four, which is amazing, uh-huh. go back to season one and watch the first yes, episode it's when hysterical. she's screaming oh about gosh. her wigs and she's going down the staircase. It's oh, I love it. So My much. favorite thing, which is, I mean, we're off on a tangent here, but uh-huh. uh, and it totally I'll reminded me that. of Utah is when they, when uh, Moira and David were like trying to get all those people over to like MLM them, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that was so amazing. Uh, I was like, oh man, that's Utah. We're Tullers. like the land of ML- MLMs in Swig Sodas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Lots yeah. of sugar consumption. <laughs> well, welcome to today's episode. We are going to talk about the misconceptions when it comes to interior design and being a designer, right? Yep. I think, yeah. I think there's a lot to unpack here, guys. Yeah. I do. What? Hey, Jess, here's a question for I'm you. I'm sorry. The, the misconception is between being a designer and a decorator. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. We're going to talk about that, but just about the industry in general. And like, if you are a designer, what people think you do versus what you actually do. Yes. For a living. And what I think everybody should know, um, yeah, the difference between a decorator and a designer. Yes. Um, I think you and I both have experienced this when someone says, hey, Jess, what do you do for a living? And I'll say, oh, I'm an interior designer. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. I was going to do that. (laughs) Maybe I still will. I don't know. So this episode is for all you, all y'all out there that have ever answered that question that way. Uh Because you need to know. we're We're straightening. The narrative. I also feel like there's um, a, a big part of the people that are tuning in for this that are interior designers. And so you guys are going to commiserate and laugh your face off at some of this as well. But we're also going to delicately tiptoe through it because there is a space for both designers and decorators. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're a different thing. No, they don't think that they're different. And so it's a delicate dance of explaining the differences between them. And they're seldom good at both. Mm-hmm. But you do need to be both, I think, to be great at your job. Yep. yep. So um, that being said, let's unpack. Okay. Um, interior put- designers and decorators. Let's let's sort of like say what the difference is between the two. Okay. Also, I think this yeah. is important because every once in a while, I'll have like a younger person thinking about going into it in college, and they want to know where do I go to college? And I'm so excited to do it, and I don't and think love they fixer upper and yes. HGTV is my life. Yes. And you're like, it's very different than what you're seeing on HGTV. (laughs) And I think you should know what an interior designer is and what they're teaching in school right now, because it's very different than in your mind, what you think it is. So this is also for people like that, or maybe there's a parent on here listening and their kid thinks they want to go into it and then they can help them understand what it is they're going to be learning in school right now. And the differences of the different schools and what you'll get out of it. Definitely. It's really important to know. Yep. So an interior, um, we'll start with interior design. Yep. And then we'll kind of go down from there. Mm -hmm. Interior design. If you're an interior designer, um, you've likely gone to school. Yep. um, And gone, I went to a a university up in Northern Utah and a lot of the gals that work with us went here as well to Utah State University. And there's a four year degree um, for in their department for interior design. So you're in that program for four years and you, that is your major. So you learn AutoCAD, um, you work on it like for at least three years. And so you come out with like really good technicalities, Mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're qualified to go into a design firm or an architecture firm and be able to like speak that language. Um, But to be an interior designer, you know, likely, you know, AutoCAD, Mm -hmm. um, you know, construction documents, you know, finished schedules, you know how to build a house. not only are you building the actual finishes on the house and specifying those and putting them in really technical documents for builders to read and build from there, but you're also doing the the furniture. Hopefully you're space planning and doing the furniture 
And this is where the line starts to bleed, I think, a little bit, because I mm-hmm. think decorators um, are very good at like the furniture, the furniture side of it, mm-hmm. right? And they can go in and and do space planning. They can do, and you know, and I know, I know. Um, it seems more decorators. like the decoration of the completed home or yeah. somebody that maybe bought an existing home, and maybe they'll even help with um, uh, cosmetics, Staging. paint, wallpaper, mm-hmm. um, furnishings, draperies, probably lighting still. Maybe yeah, li- lighting. yeah, that yeah. Maybe we'll replace the old lighting. Um, I think also. Um, Interior designers need to know a lot about plumbing and electric and RCPs and cabinetry drawings, cabinetry. Yeah. We have to be able to draw the kitchen. And so there's a real, real technical side and um, almost engineering side of knowing how things are built because you've got to be able to do that. And then you also have to, you end up learning a lot of industry knowledge about um, all appliances, makes and models, what they're good for, what's not good about them, different tiles, where they're best to use floor or wall or there's just a lot of specificity and um, you really are technicians yeah. in the game. I used to tell people, cause it would, it would get frustrating sometimes when people would be like, Oh, that's fun. Like, do you do like pillows? Are you a pillow maker? What do you do? Uh-huh. And so I would almost say interior architecture cause yeah. that sounds a little bit more like what I was doing. Yeah. You know? And some schools actually do call their programs interior architecture. Yeah. We have a girl that works for us right now that just finished a five-year degree in interior architecture. Okay. And one that actually left Alice Lane to go do a master's in interior architecture and so that's definitely hold hands with yeah. the interior design degree. I think they're like an extension of each other and you're going to be a really good interior designer with the knowledge of both. Yep. Yeah. And then decorators on the other side are, um, they're, they're more, um, more co- of a top layer, top layer. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so good with furnishings and draperies and probably hopefully, hopefully styling. styling. Yeah. Jinx. Yep. Yep. space planning. And I think they're going to know like people that can recover your sofa or the best places to get furnishings, or they're going to maybe even go, um, antiquing with you. And they're just really all about the furnishing of the home and knowing, um, who to call, who the paper hanger is and who the wallpaper maker is. And I mean, well, uh, the drapery maker is, and they're going to have all their workrooms on speed dial and they're going to just be really good at that top layer. Yep. And and you really do need both, I think, in the industry. 100% do. Yeah. And hopefully, um, hopefully, if you do hire an interior designer, hopefully they're good or somebody on their staff is really good at decorating too. Because in school, we don't learn how to style. Yeah. And I don't know if there's decorating school that you can go to where you learn how to style, but I think it's kind of an instinct. I'm like, it's, you have a knack for it, you know? And uh-huh. there, there's so many amazing designers that are self-taught. Yep. You know, some of our favorites Yes, um, that are self-taught. So if you didn't go to school and you're a designer, awesome. You were, you were curious and you got the people on your staff or underneath you to help you complete the project from like mm-hmm. the very, you know, the start of a plan to the very last styling point. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think that that, if you're looking for somebody to do a dream home, you want somebody that can take it from like collaborating with an architect to develop the plans all the way down to the styling to make you look really, really good. Yeah. We get so many calls where clients are apprehensive or like they're inquiring about using us and they're like, gosh, the last person I use, they just couldn't finish it. They just couldn't stick the landing. And like, I have all these unfinished projects or I have all these holes in my house and, and it just doesn't look done and I need help to finish it. So be a finisher in whatever realm you're in. Um, yeah, I think that that's what, and that's what, if you finish a project and you can photograph it, that's what will get you published. Mm-hmm. So, and that's yeah. your calling card for the next job yeah. is that you did a good job on, on this house and that they'll want to call you for the next. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I will say when you have a designer that's been there from like the very beginning and like doing all the finishes on the walls and skinning the building and really paid attention to the architecture and the finish work all the way down to the furniture and styling, the rooms are more successful. Yes. They just are because they yeah. have a, a full vision of someone that was capable of doing everything. Yes. That's not, and, to, that's not to say if you're a decorator, you're, you're completing in gorgeous rooms, mm-hmm. amazing rooms. Yeah. But. And top layers are really important because oftentimes that's mm-hmm. what you're going to get complimented on in your home is the cohesiveness. Mm-hmm. I think also you need to make sure and hire for taste level. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a skill that is definitely not taught in school. And it's something that you're very curious about 
and you are curious about it in the construction of clothing and the materials that they're using and how to put together a gorgeous outfit. And your taste level is just one of those things that makes you really good at putting a home together. And it's kind of an untouchable, unspeakable thing that you just innately have to be super curious about. And I oftentimes think people with extraordinary taste levels do have beautiful homes just out of instinct. Yeah. So you guys might all have a girlfriend with a great taste level and you're like, she should be a, she should be a decorator, you know, and she should, she should, she should. And I'm sure she doesn't have a hard time like pulling it together. So you can see it's like a really, really broad range of skills and information. And so we're just going to kind of go through our list. This was an article written by. There are several articles and uh -huh. a lot of them had the same points. And then we added a couple of our own. In here too. So these were the just, I thought the points are the most interesting and things that we could kind of dive into. Yeah. So. Love it. Okay. So we hit number one, which is interior designers and decorators are the same thing. They're not. Yes. Um, but you need both Agreed. to be great. Yes. I think. Um, number two, interior design can be done by anyone. Is this offensive to you guys? Like when you hear it, like it's, it, I mean, does it make it seem like what you do is not validated? You know what I mean? And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example because I think that spans like multiple industries. I think that's, you know, there are misconceptions in every industry that kind of make the person that's doing it, you know, like not feel validated. And yeah. in the music industry, it's like, you don't know how many times I've been emailed and said, Hey, like we're so-and-so this, this company and we're putting on an event. Like we don't have budget to pay a musical act, but would you want to come and perform to get exposure? And it's like, that's like the most offensive thing to a musician. Cause you're like, Oh, do you want me to work for, a, you know, half my life and then come and just give it to you for free? Uh -huh. So offensive. Yeah. So yeah. kind of like that. Totally. I also think, um, graphic design could be in the same boat. Like everybody's a graphic designer, mm -hmm. photographer, photographer yeah. sure. if they buy a camera, they think they're a photographer. Right. Mm -hmm. And we all know those of you that are photographers or have friends that are photographers. We all know there's a huge difference mm -hmm. between those that are schooled and are trained and continue to um, develop their eye for things. I understand lighting. And yeah. There's, then, there's so many. Then that's offensive to them when somebody gets a camera and they're like, I'm a photographer and I'll do your wedding. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah. So I think that um, we understand the place for both, but they're definitely not the same thing. And um, can they be done by anybody? I mean, I'm pe everybody tries it and it just depends on what outcome that you like. But I would say a lot of people should not be interior designers that are them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. And if you are like at all interested and you want to call yourself that, mm -hmm. an interior designer, just... I don't know. I think those that are curious and do a lot of research and like, you know, whether you go to school or whether you just dive in mm -hmm. and really have a thirst for knowledge and like take a drafting class and like get in there, you betcha. Yeah. You can be a designer, but I don't think it's fair to the builder or to a homeowner, anybody that you're going to help with to label yourself as that if you're not going to be able to like back it up with like, you know, the documentation, with documentation and, yeah. and construction documents that can actually be built because there's a lot of expensive mistakes that can happen along the way. Even when you are trained, mm -hmm. you know, there's still mistakes that happen and that, but we, we learn from them and we get better and we know enough that they don't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So, um, can anyone do interior design? You can, you just have to like get some, get some knowledge under your belt. Yeah. And I think in this regard, we, it, they'd probably be using the term wrong. They'd probably be more of a decorator. Yeah. Right. And I, so I'd agree. say, could anybody decorate? For sure. We all do it in our own homes. And if you've got a knack for it, your friend comes and helps them. And honestly, if you put your 10,000 hours in, you're going to be good. Yeah. You know, you're going to be an expert at that point. So, and totally. you got to get started somewhere when it comes to decorating. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like, again, I don't think they're going to teach it in school. I think it's going to be an instinct yeah. that you're going to, eventually figure out and you're going to fill up your Rolodex and you're gonna have all the contacts and the best people for upholstery. And you know what I mean? You're going to have all your trade accounts set up, but it's going to take you years to be great at your craft. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Okay. okay. Next one. Number three, interior design doesn't require technical knowledge. That for sure is a misconception. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot. You have to know a lot of technicalities. I think in our team of 10 designers, 11 designers now, mm -hmm. We have some that are more technical than others, some that are more have a Midas touch and are better at styling, some that are more better at project management. They Everybody has a niche that they're awesome at. They all have a similar degree. They all understand base layer. 
and they all know how to read construction documents and to create construction documents and elevations and how to annotate them and how to like tag those with finish schedules and stuff and shoot that off, put it all. I think what I'm so proud of is that we can like design this home. Everything's, you know, finished approved by the client. We can do all these drawings, put them in a Dropbox and send them in the cyberspace in the cloud across the nation to Washington, DC or to wherever. And a builder can build off those documents. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the technicality, like that's where I think we shine builders like us because we're good at that. And we've made sure that that's, um, that's something we hold a very high importance to. So Mm -hmm. yes, interior designers need to be technical. Yes. And I'm probably the least technical, even my architecture teacher, Mm -hmm. I was graduating. He's like, you want to know what? When you were a sophomore and you applied for the program, you were probably at the bottom of my 20 list uh-uh. because it was based off of construction documents. I wasn't great. I'm an artist, guys. I'm, a, I'm a super creative. That's um, funny. But he's like, but now look at you because I, I, like, I was really hungry for it and I worked my ass off and, mm-hmm. and I made myself good at it because I didn't want to be at the bottom of the totem. So anyway. I think, and I think that goes for anybody listening, even in any field, is if you're really hungry for it and you work your ass off at it. Yep. that you can be great yep. at whatever you want to do. Yep. And so um, keep that in mind and you can be the best decorator in the business in the South. You know what I mean? Yep. I feel like they're very highly decorated in the South. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Low blood sugar alert. Be careful <laughs> with yourself, Jesse. <laughs> sorry, everyone. We're going to take some insulin. It's actually high blood sugar alert. Okay. Next one is um, oh. interior designers push their own vision and not the client's. You have a great example from Darren. I do. Uh, Darren Brooks. Hey, hey, professor. Um, he was one of my interior design professors at Utah State. And we're up in this like really highly decorated room um, for one of our, our lessons. And there was this, I can't remember if it was Schumacher. So it was like a really like fancy, formal, a little bit more mature wallpaper on the walls. And he had us all sitting down on, on you know, and he was at the front of the class. And he, he had a piece, this tapestry that looked really old, mm-hmm. like not even like a cool tapestry. It just looked like a tired, a tired fabric. And he held it up. He's like, okay, um, I'm the client. I love this fabric and you have to use it in the next room. How many of you in my mind, in his mind, he's probably you young fool designers that don't know yeah. anything. How many of you would say no to using this fabric if your client brought it to you? And there was probably like 80% of the class, including, including dumb young Suzanne was just like, yeah, right. That's lame. <laughs> use that. Stood up, you know, and he's in, we're all standing up there, 80% of us. And he's like, you're all fired. <laughs> and I'm like, that was a really good example and teaching moment um, early on in my education that you have to take what the client wants and what they love and you have to make it great. Mm-hmm. It is your job to turn that and like really not to reflect them accurately, but with your sensibilities. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's why they hire a designer. Yeah. People need to be pushed a little bit so that if they were comfortable with everything you're pitching to them, you're not doing a good job. Mm-hmm. You want to make people a little bit uncomfortable because you want to give them something that they would never do for themselves because you see it in them or you extracted something from a comment that they made. So it is your job to make them look as awesome as they are. I think we're all our worst critics. If I... And like thinking about something, I'll usually throw it to Jess. I'm like, what do you think? Should, dare I, should I do that? She does the same thing with me. And we're like, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's totally you. You wore that color the other day. You look amazing in it. Da, da, da. So mm-hmm. it's our job to make people look as awesome as they really are. People yeah. don't give themselves enough credit. And I think that that's the most joyful part of our jobs is totally. when they go into their home at the end and they say, I had no idea. Was this cool? Yeah. Or I had, I had no, and like, and they usually are emotional when they walk mm-hmm. through it. It's for the first time because they've, they haven't seen themselves in that lens Yeah, and it's really, it's really beautiful. And that I think, I think it's, it's not a compliment when you go into a house and you say, Hey, it looks like Joanna Gaines was here. Yeah. That's not you. Yeah. Guys, (laughs) totally. For sure. It's not you like be authentic. And I think it's, it's, it's a bummer and a misfortune if the, your designer is making you look like them. Mm-hmm. Cause you're way cooler. Yeah. If that's the case. For sure. So. I love experimenting um, in my own life because we make people sort of trust us and we push them a little, but we do it through the lens of we know who you are because we've interrogated you and then elevating them or pushing them a little bit to see things in a different way, or you're never going to tire of it. If we go with polished nickel. If we go with brass, 
you're going to want to replace this in the next five years. Or you know I mean, we're really trying to talk to them also about what we understand in the industry knowledge, including their style yeah. through our lens. And so I'm always trying to sort of experiment on this because we do it for a living. Like people have to, it's like a game of trust. We're all doing the trust fall with each other in a presentation. And so I'll usually do that with like my hair girl or the lady at the makeup counter. I'll be like, I just want to know you're the expert. You be my Disneyland fast pass. Just tell me what do you think you would do and what would be best? Because you know more about hair color than I do. This is a concept photo that I think is lovely, but is that going to be great on me? And really trusting them in the process for them to be the expert. And it always looks way better than doing my idea. Way better. Way better. And so it's like, it's a fun thing for you to play around with in every industry of your life that you're using um, a professional to um, in the service industry. You know what I mean? To trust them. If you go out to dinner and you ask the waiter, what's the best thing on the menu? You know? You say, surprise me. Or say, surprise if me. you don't have an allergy. Yeah. Say, surprise and me. And then what they surprise you with is so much better than anything you would have thought to order yourself because you're usually just caught in your own rut, in your own mind. But when you um, really trust the professionals in front of you, you end up having a more extraordinary thing happen. And that's true for interior design as well. And those are the most successful projects too, is Mm -hmm. when the client trusts us based off of the knowledge that we're getting from them. The first, the first design is the best. We always have like an option A, option B, option C. Option A is always the best. Yeah. So. Yeah, Yep. for sure. But you need to make sure that you love it too. And it's through your lens or yeah, yeah, you align with it. And then there's a level of trust involved in that too. But we always do it with the client in mind. We don't just take our agenda into their house. And if they hate it, we, at the very beginning, if you're a designer, I hope you're saying something along these lines, tell them you can't, you can't offend me. Like we always tell a client that you cannot offend us. Mm -hmm. If you hate something, tell us you hate it. Oh yeah. If you, if you love it, tell us that too, because that'll give us, feed us more information you know, as we continue to design your project Mm -hmm. to know what you're being drawn to and what you absolutely hate or remind you of your grandmother or whatever it is. Yeah. I love that. That's really great. Okay. Next up, all interior designers have picture perfect homes. That's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. Uh (laughs) It is so funny. We don't have our client's budget. We have our budgets and we have really great ideas and we see the most beautiful materials on earth and we can't afford any of them. (laughs) But you want to know what? (laughs) But we love them. We love to present with them and we're so happy for those that have budget for it. And we're so happy we get to touch this stuff and do it all day long. But when it comes to our own homes, it's, it's an interesting mix. It's still designer to us, but it's um, with more humble materials or a really good eye at a sale or... Or, um, I don't know, Sue, something's on the tip of your tongue. What were you going to say? We're scrappy. We're scrappy. Yeah. (laughs) I think, I think if you're a creative and if you know what is the absolute, like most attainable thing, if you've seen luxury, then Mm -hmm. you figure out what is the closest thing way I can get to looking like that. That's reflective of me, you know, and sometimes that's a complete 180 and like figuring out your style and it might not be the same. It shouldn't Mm -hmm. be the same as any of your clients anyway, but it's. You, fi- you figure out a creative way to implement mm-hmm. and make your space rad. Totally. Right? Yeah. So. It's super vulnerable though, because... Oh my gosh. Because you want to say, I'm, I'm better than my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Um, because, you know, we just, we have more limited resources and we do this all day. And so by the time we do get to ours, sometimes we're like oh, this doesn't sound like fun right now, but Suzanne's bathroom just sprang a leak. And so you have to hurry and do impromptu bathroom design for yourself. I sure do. With the materials that are available in the marketplace right this second. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to order anything. That I can afford and implement implement in a creative way. Yes, right, totally. We have a lot of, again, Disneyland fast passes, reps, things that I'm like texting right now. I'm like, hey, what do you have? What's in stock? What's rad? That no one's buying right now because I need it. Yeah. Actually, right now, <laughs> immediately. Yeah, I have, and I don't I want it Louis to be on my my nine month old on my hip, and I'm ripping up a laminate flooring that the dumb cowboys put on my bathroom, and now it's leaking up with there, a so. kitchen spatula. With a kitchen spatula and brand new nails. Oh no! F. I, I was like, do I find gloves? I'm like, no, Louis right here. I have the spatula. Just get this done. Which also, just for your information, <laughs> just to complete the visual in your head right now, Louis is a 100 percentile for weight and and head size and. 
percent. They say ninety six. He's a isn't solid. That, isn't that a stupid boy. percent? I'm like, just go to a hundred. Why are you? Why are you shining? So Louis, Louis is no lightweight. So Sue's little tiny Suzanne Hall is packing heat with this kid, just like on her hip with the kitchen spatula ripping up a floor. Yep. Because she sprung it's a leak true. and it's time. Eat it. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to do this with the money in my wallet. So that's yeah, how entire interior it. designers so live. <laughs> and I had the client was late for a presentation yesterday, like on a Zoom. They're up in Oregon. They're like, oh, we thought it was P, you know, Pacific Coast time, whatever. And we're like, that's fine. Um, we'll see you in 40 minutes. I booked it over to Florida Decor. And damn it, I found the best looking <laughs> two by two marble. That's actually really pretty. It's just, it's a hunt. We're hunters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hunter gatherers. Uh-huh. I, 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 only, I knew it like right when I saw it. I'm like, well, that's it. Yeah. Price right. Okay. Little calculation. I need nine boxes. Boom, 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 boom. Loaded yep. in my car. Here's my card. Uh-huh. And I was back in time for the presentation. With the floor, second. with the floor in your trunk. Yeah. That's, I, that I is shot the it, one. killed it and dragged it home. Yes. Literally to meet my plumber after work at five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, that is the luxury of being an interior designer is that you know it when you see it. And you don't have to see every. You have to chili dick around for the rest uh-uh. of the other stuff. You don't have to see all the tile that's available in the state of, the, of Utah to be able to make your decision. You know it. And I you know all the other vendors. And I'm just like, well, I know that they carry that. Like, I would have picked that anyway. Yeah. And I just yeah. found it. So. Talk about Disneyland Fast Pass. Anyway. That's but. what I was going to say. That's a skill that I've seen both of you guys like use when we've been working on stuff is that you're, you have the ability to make the best decision within the budget possible also why we're worth two hundred dollars an hour oh yes exactly because cheers high five because sue right. can design her whole bathroom in an hour and a half mm-hmm. with a dip to gap and a sketching pen yeah and she's got it and she's ready to go meet the contractor at five and the bathroom is designed oh this exactly. is like a 48 hour <laughs> 48 hour bathroom design yeah oh, totally <laughs> Suzanne throws in a mother effort. Okay. (laughs) Um, Let's go to number six. Interior design is something you can do from home. She's so like, I just did it in the back of my car. <laughs> you better believe I could do it from the comfort of my home. Yeah. It's probably while, while watching Spider-Man and his amazing friends with my son. I'm like, right. <laughs> yeah, you can do it from anywhere. It's like the cat in the hat. Sure. You can do it on Give a roof. A point. You can do it on a yeah roof of a car. Um, it's an it's an interesting thing because everybody's going to have a different approach to this. It depends on what what scale you want to work at. If you're working with a team. I would recommend not doing it in your home because you do need to not do interior design when you walk in the door at night. And I feel like if it's in your home, it would be a hard thing to take a break from and your home wouldn't feel like a home anymore. It would feel like an office. Now that's if you're working on big projects, you've got big teams working on it. It really consumes your life. And the only break I get from interior design is at night and it's usually nine o'clock and I finally have on my pajamas. Big bare robe. And I put on my husband's <laughs> big old brown robe and I get in bed and I turn on my heating pad and put it on my frozen feet and I turn on TV so I can change the channel in my mind. Because if I don't, I'm going to work until I fall asleep. And so I think not having it in your home is the greatest luxury so that you can just be home when you're home. Yeah. And also... The more you do it and the more lines that you rep, the more libraries you accumulate. And so at and Alice Lane, so room in your trunk. Yeah. At Alice Lane, we have two massive libraries just to house all the fabrics and all of the tiles and all the materials that we need to be able to have at our fingertips because we want to design as quick as we can for the hourly rate that we're able to get paid. And we need to accomplish a lot in an hour. And so we have to have everything right there on speed dial not to mention the the islands and the drawers that we house all of our other favorite things in. So we just have all that stuff at our fingertips and we design in every style. And so we need to have a lot available at all times. So we have an office, we have a big conference room where clients can meet us there where we can be professionals and we leave our homes at home and we leave our office at the office at night. And I think luxury that very, it's not a very good work-life balance, but the there is a balance that's achieved by being able to lock the door at the studio at night and go home. Peace so, yep. yeah. So I think, uh, but I, I do think that people that maybe work on one project a year or two projects a year, they have maybe a home office, they can figure it out. And then they're just going to spend a lot of time in their car going from place to place in search like of it's gonna take longer furnishings. And yeah, a lot longer. Their hourly rate is going to be spent a lot in Driving Travel. and traveling to D&D to and go figuring it out. Examples. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're going to spend a lot more money for that interior designer than having one with everything they need at their fingers. In a store. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I was doing an approval for one project yesterday and we like, 
and they pulled together two rooms in one day. Mm -hmm. Like that's amazing. Yeah. You know, so it is amazing. Yeah. Our efficiencies, your knowledge, I think, which yeah. can't, it can be done from home for sure. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Yeah. And we had to experience a little tiny bit of that during the sure. pandemic, yeah. you know, but there were some days that we would still go in and grab all the finishes and materials we need and then drive home. And, you know, when we really were like trying to quarantine, but yeah. then it loosened up a little and we were wearing masks and we were back at it. And so, and it's yeah. so much more enjoyable. You know, I know that yeah. like, there's something like people talk about work-life balance, you know, and it's nice to work from home. But at the end of the day, like it's hard to work from home. Yeah. It is hard, especially if you have children and like to just be able to kind of shut the door on that and then go and like pay attention, be great in the avenue that you're in when you're in it and yeah. go home Yeah, and be a great mom at that point. Totally. Like, it just changed the channel. It changes the channel. I was going to say the one other thing that you risk too, is that I remember when I was doing my own thing for a little bit, you have like all your favorite fabrics. And so it's bound that you're going to use the same fabric a few times on each project because you just don't have the resources. Yeah. So you're going to have less variety because you just have less resources. Yeah. It's going to take a lot longer to build them. Yeah, so. for sure. Okay. Second to the last question. You don't have to be good at sales to be an interior designer. Hullabaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, I, I think true. that David, um, David Phoenix <laughs> said it best when we recorded his podcast. I still love to go back and listen to that one. He's such a That's treat, so but, um, he said, I'm really good at sales. I'm really good. He goes, I can land the plane. Yes on any project. And he was like, I have a person that's all nervous in my office. Like, Oh, they're going to freak out over the price. He's like, just give it to me. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. That's the one we're going with. Just give it to me. Mm. I all land this plane, you know? And so I think that we do have some teams that are better at sales than others. And the ones that aren't good at sales or projects can't move forward because they don't dare tell them it's time to buy all of the things to move forward with their project. Mm -hmm. But the client doesn't know what to do. They just want their house to get finished. And it's too bad you're not good at sales because now you're at the portion of the design where you're like, it's time to push go on all the furniture so we can get it here in time for your build to be done. The client hired you to do the job. Mm -hmm. So sell them the darn furniture so that we can get it in the house when it's time. But there's a sales piece that inevitably they get stump on. It's a speed bump for them because they don't, know how to land the plane mm -hmm. in David Phoenix's it's, word. It's hard to talk money. Like it really is. As I've, some people it is. And if you're not good at it, then you need to work with a team of people where somebody is super comfortable and they get it because you're just offering them a great service. You need a closer. You're not sure. trying yeah. to take their money. You're trying to finish the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if they're, and if they are dragging their feet, you say, what's what it, where is the, the issue or like what's the halt and then let's reselect something if there's something that's too expensive oh yeah we'll find another option it's truth serum you know yeah so like as honest as you can be with your client and they with you the faster the sale is going to happen so that you can have it. at the end of the day everybody wants that project to be done and beautiful yes we want to photograph or photography it we want to photograph it uh -huh. and they want to live in it so yes we all like it's it's um you know a two-prong Yes, benefit, it is. So, but you do have to be good with people. Mm -hmm. I think if you're good with people, yes. you're good at sales and just completing things because you, tr you can trust each other. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, um, I sent that apps, there's this like TV show called abstract and I can't even remember what it's streaming on, but it's awesome. And it talks with architects, designers, artists, look it up. You guys should watch it. We were watching this one on this, um, photographer and he was saying, he's just like, you know, it's, you know, taking a really great picture. It's, it's hard. It takes a lot of skill and technicalities to know exactly to get that right shot. Mm -hmm. He's like, but 99.99% .99 of that becoming a great shot is a connection that the photographer can have with the person to get the right shot. I totally and feel like that. That is so 100% true for an industry and probably a lot of industries um, to, for a successful outcome, right? Mm -hmm. For to get, get it to be successful, that it feels like the client and you're proud of your work. Like there has to be a connection, like some really solid trust. Mm -hmm. And what this photographer did, he had like, before he even gets to a shoot, he did his research. He understood the person. He understood their causes. He understood what they were interested in. Mm, and he knew exactly brilliant. like, I heard you, I heard you're interested in this, or I heard you went to school here. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. And just, it starts to like, so do your research, get curious about your clients and, you know, it's a really long process. It's a two plus year project, mm -hmm. what we do. And so you really do just need to get to know them, get to know their family, 
what's yeah. important to them. And then it won't feel like a sale because you know them innately to know that that option is too expensive. Yep. You shouldn't even like, that'll be offensive. Don't show it to them. Yeah. You're a jerk if you do. Yeah. So know totally. that. Yeah, definitely. Read the room. Read the freaking room. Yes. Okay. Last one. Interior design is not for modest homes. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> that none of us here would have yeah. interior design. Interior design. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say some of the coolest spaces that I've ever seen have been like small apartments. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. It's, it's like the design impact, wraps right? itself around these smaller rooms in a better way. Like, yeah, it's, it has a bigger impact yeah. on a smaller space, which mm. is why powder baths are such small, a scream. Small space, yeah. big design. Yes. Right. I love it so much. Interior design is for everybody and every budget. It's really just making, um, a choice that's great for you and maybe has a memory point to yeah. it. And it's interesting. And I think the less you look like everybody else, the more of an individual you're going to feel like yeah. in your life. Yeah. I know that it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that that's, I've been hearing, seeing a lot of articles mean like there's this generation of having to have the perfect interior and having mm. to have like on Instagram and having, yes. the filter and having it be perfect all the time. And that's not the case. None of us live in a perfect home. Mm-mm. You know, yes, we remove the paper towels. Like when we're doing a photo shoot, just cause that's a prettier picture, mm-hmm. but just know that like it's, if it's, done in good taste and it's done in your taste that even with a mess, it's a happy mess and it's life. Mm -hmm. And we all, everybody has that. And I would expect nothing else when I walk into somebody's home than to see them living in it. Yes. Right. Cheers. Beautifully said. I love that. You guys, thank you so much for listening today um, on misconceptions when it comes to being an interior designer or a decorator. And if you guys have any questions that you want to send into the podcast for us to answer here, Send those to dear Alice at alicelanehome.com. Did I do it right? Yes, you did. Every time I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> dear Alice, <laughs> dear Alice at alicelanehome.com because we want to answer them for you. And Sue and I are just barely starting to do carpool Q&A again on so Instagram. Good so good to we're, be back in the car seat. Yes. Well, we're going to answer these on Instagram on Fridays. So we'll be doing it from, if you guys follow us on at Alice Lane Home or if you want to see the interior design site, it's um, at Alice Lane Interior Design. And um, you can see us building the homes and working on homes and designing them on that feed. But we're on the Alice Lane Home one is where we're doing carpool Q&A, which is where we get in the car and we answer one of your questions. And it's it's us interacting with each other. And it's not just our voices. It's um, also video. So yeah. it can be it funny. It can be, be deep. Don't feel, don't feel shy about submitting any questions. Cause yes. Because we want them all. more fun. <laughs> Yeah, and we fun Q&A. we figure out what to talk about from you guys. So we want to hear from you. So anyway, check us out. Send us your questions. We'll catch you guys next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 